Hey, this thing is longer. This footage is called North Ontario Boater Captures Bigfoot on Film. Uh, although I doubt it's film. There the big guy or gal is back there on the far shore. Uh, it appears to be bulky. It appears to be red from top to bottom. We're, we're, we're going to check that out. Uh, and a few more seconds and it's across the clearing and gone. Now, if you've never seen my channel, here's what I do. I, I don't just turn on a microphone and start sharing opinions off the top of my head and then I'm done in five or 10 minutes. I try to bring a little science into this. I'm going to, I'm going to stabilize this footage and take, try to take all the shake out of it I can so that we get a better look at this guy. I'm going to try to lighten the shadows back in those trees to see if there's something we're missing. And I'm going to do my best to at least get an estimate of how tall our, our mystery beast is. Let's check it out. <laughs> All right, so here's what it looks as I'm stabilizing it. I'm trying to both take the movement and the rotation out of it. And now here is our stabilized footage. I'll rock back and forth. Give us a better look. Now let's zoom in a little. And that, unfortunately, even though if it's HD footage, when, when you start zooming in like, what, 800%, it's going to look blocky and digitized like that. Now let's take a quick look into these shadows, see what's going on in there. And we see it just receding back into the shadows right there as I, as I uh, scrub backwards. And now I'm going to just start playing with the exposure levels. A and we can't see it, even though we know it's standing right there. Here, let me zoom in some. Coming back out. And look, as it goes into darkness, it just goes invisible. And, and that's the deal with, with even HD footage. HD footage does not mean it's magic footage. Uh, at a certain point, HD footage, just like, just like anything else, is going to fall apart. Okay, now I want to do a quick test just to see how much the color of this thing fluctuates. So I'm going to drop in a little, little white patch there, and I'm just going to start taking samples for like down around its foot area and you can see the color picker there whatever i'm over it selects that color so now I'll lay that swatch down and then say around the knee level i'll lay that down and now around the thigh area get that in there and then maybe around its hip look about like that now abdomen area like about like that chest area about like that now shoulder shoulder height getting a little darker it could be going into shadow now so for its head i'm going to get further back here on its head and do something about like that and now i'm going to bring in a color slider and we can just scroll over those colors we've got red green and blue and we can see the literal numbers and and we can see they're not changing all that much so whatever this thing is it's the same relative color head to toe all right now i'm going to try to get at least a rough estimate as to how tall our, our red mystery mystery beast is so let me zoom in a little and what i've done i'm going to use this spruce tree back here mature spruce trees grow to a height of 50 to 70 feet quite a little leeway but it's all we've got so what i did i dropped in six more copies of the red mystery beast and you'll notice that there's a little tree left over on the top but also that the ground here slopes down to the water and since our red mystery beast is standing further down on the slope, we're going to call that about even. All right. So let's just start with 70 feet divided by seven red mystery beast. That would mean it's 10 foot tall. If it, if that tree back there was 70 foot tall, let's go 60 feet now divided by seven. That means it's eight and a half foot tall, approximately. 
Let's try the low end of that spectrum for spruce trees. 50 feet divided by 7. That still means it's around 7 foot tall. So, again, I know this isn't pinpoint accuracy, but we're just trying to estimate this, all right? And, and again, it is hunched over. Its torso is leaning forward like 60 degrees. If this thing was, was standing perfectly upright, who knows how tall it would be? And by the way, this torso lean, uh, that's something I write about. There's a, a section in my book called The Men Who Lean When They Run. This thing is leaning forward the same 61 degrees that the Patterson footage leans and in several other videos I've found over the years. Now, here's something weird. It doesn't have human walk mechanics. It doesn't move like a human. Watch, watch this trailing shin right here. Boom, right there. Watch it go up to a near 90 degree angle. That, going back a decade, is the first video I ever made. It's called 21 Degrees Between Bigfoot and You, talking about the difference in how high their trailing shin comes up versus humans. We have a much more efficient walk where our, our feet and shins just don't come up that high. So it's at least very odd to be seeing that right there. All right, so let's sum this up. We, we've got this guy here, or gal, I mean, it walks weird, you know, with the whole kicking the trailing shin up 91 degrees and, and thrusting its knee way up high when it walks like it's going to knee somebody. And then the fact that it walks with its torso leaning forward the same 61 degrees as the Patterson Bigfoot and a lot of the other big furries that I've, I've found in other videos. That's quite a coincidence. Then you've got the fact that it is the same reddish, reddish tone, reddish color from head to toe. Plus, it at least appears to be really, really big. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let my patrons and my YouTube members vote to see if they want a second video. And if they do, I'm going to prove to them 100% whether this is a human or something else. It is a new process I've come up with. It is, it's going to be a game changer. No longer do we have to look at videos or photos and wonder, gee, what is that? We, we can now know 100%. It's measurable, repeatable. It is scientific proof. And it is so, so simple. It should have been thought of a half a century ago. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Special thanks as always to my patrons and my YouTube members. You guys make all, all of the research, all the time I spend making these videos and doing all these tests, you make it all possible. Uh, special thanks to all of my subscribers. You helped me reach 100,000 subscribers. Thank you so very much. Also, everybody who buys my caps and, and my book, my first book, I appreciate you guys so very much. All right, everybody, take care.